Mr. and Mrs. North, starring Barbara Britton and Richard Denning. Bill Wigan and tell him we'll be late for dinner. No. What is it? Oh, I'm sorry to bother you, but we just had a flat tire and we need a jack. Uh, could you lend us one? We haven't got a jack. Well, could we use your phone? We have an important engagement in town. We haven't got a telephone. Nice hospitable people. Yeah. Well, maybe there's another house further down the road. They do, too, have a phone, the meanies. Well, maybe it's not connected. Come on, let's get out of here before it starts raining. What was that? Sounded like a woodpecker. Listen, sounds like it's coming from that window with a white shade. It's painted on the inside. Well, somebody's writing. Help. Murder. Jerry, something's going on here. <laughs> Did you hear that? It's probably some kids playing. That was a woman screaming. Jerry, look. Do you suppose they saw it? Yes, they're looking up here. We better find out what it means. Now let's just keep out of it. Come on. They may notify the police. I can explain it to the police. <laughs> Don't you make another sound. Jerry and Tisdale, let us come in uh, just until the storm is over. Oh, yeah. just, just lean on me now. Uh, my wife isn't feeling well. I, I wonder if we, she could come inside and rest for a while. I'm sorry, we can't take in strangers. Let them in, Ada. Very well. Come in. Oh, thank you. Gee, I hope you're not getting one of your bad colds. I'll be all right, dear. Perhaps if she had a cup of tea, Ada. Yeah. I'll put the water on right away. Help! What's that? Oh, don't let it upset you. Unfortunately, my wife is a mental case. It's too bad. I'm sorry. It's been a great trial. We're trying to avoid sending her to an institution. She has hallucinations. Persecution mania. She thinks that somebody's trying to murder her. You certainly have our sympathies, Mr. Burton. Richard Burton. Now, our name is North. Pam and Jerry. How do you do? I hope you're feeling better, Mrs. North. Oh, I, I will be if I can get a little rest. Uh, Mr. Burton, how far is it to the nearest garage? About three miles. 
Yeah. Well, if, if you could lend me a raincoat and some boots, I could pick up a jack and change that tire while my wife is resting. Oh, no, Jerry. I, I want you here with me. If I could just lie down uh, until the rain stops. Sounds like an all-night downpour. I wonder if we possibly have a room. Maybe disagreeable. The storm upsets Mrs. Burton. Oh, we'd understand. Oh. This is my sister Ada. Mr. and Mrs. North. They want a room for the night. That's up to you, Richard. I've told them about poor Cheryl's hallucinations. Yes, the poor child. We've tried everything, but it seems hopeless. I'll never give up. We're going to Europe in a few months to consult another specialist. Please, help me. Perhaps I'd better go up and quiet her. I'd better show you to your room. Thank you. We certainly appreciate your kindness. Be comfortable here. Ada will bring you your tea. Thank you very much. Sorry to be such a bother. No bother at all. Are you all right, darling? Yes, don't look so worried. I just wanted to look the place over. Pam, you scared the wits out of me. Shh. They're a weird pair, aren't they? Mm. This house. Anything could happen in a place like this, including murder. Yeah, as long as it isn't ours. Lock the door. There's no key in it. Fine thing. Open it. I'll bet he's outside in the hall listening. Oh, you and your imagination. Oh, it seems a little stuffy in here. I thought we'd get some air. Of course. Here's your tea. I brought up some sandwiches. I thought you might be hungry. Oh, that's very thoughtful of you. Here, I'll take it. Thank you very much. Good night. Good night. Tea and sandwiches. <laughs> I could eat a horse. You don't think I'm going to drink that, do you? covers up whatever else is in it. Well, but Pam, I'm starved. I'd rather have you hungry than poisoned. Oh, you're positively morbid. All right, Smarty, you want to bet? Well, it'll be all right if we just relax and mind our own business. You know, the best thing we can do is get some sleep. <laughs> this bed's a real old-fashioned McCoy. Oh, and am I pushed. Just lie down as you are. <laughs> uh, next girl I marry is going to have no imagination, so help me, Ann. What are going to do about the door? Oh, just put a chair under the knob. Don't forget to put the cat out there. They didn't show up. That's funny. You mean they stood you up on your own birthday? They sure did. That's not like them at all. Right on the dot? Yeah. Well, I sent out a call to have them picked up. Yes, yes. Hello. Uh-huh. It's about the kid. Oh? Right. The traffic patrol found their car on the road 10 miles south of Reed Junction with a flat tire. Holy mackerel, I forgot to give Jerry back his wheel jack. <laughs> and they're stuck in the sticks. 
Oh, my. But you know, I still can't figure out why they didn't phone. Well, maybe they tried. Now, uh, here, I haven't left all day. Had a sandwich sent in. You know, boss, there's something wacky about this. Especially seeing it's your birthday. Yeah. Come on, let's take a ride. Jerry, wake up. you wrote on the window. Thank heaven. Please. Please help me. You've been kept a prisoner. I'm sure they killed my father. Well, are you sure you're not just having hallucinations? No. No. Tell the police to look in the basement. I'm sure they buried him there. But why? Why would they do that? I wrote to my father. But I was afraid of my husband, Richard. But they intercepted the letter. Then my father got worried and came here to see what was wrong. Go on, I'm listening. He decided to take me home with him. That night, he and Richard had a terrible quarrel. Next morning, Richard told me father had left. But I couldn't believe he'd gone without me. my grandfather's estate in a few weeks. I know Richard would do anything to keep me here. Trying to prove I'm crazy. I went down to the basement. Saw the first of men. I accused them of killing my father. That's when he said I was crazy. And locked me in. I know they're planning to kill me. Just as soon as I get control of the money. Please help me. We'll do everything we can. Be careful. They find out you've talked to me. Capable of anything. Don't worry. I'm not afraid. You just be quiet. She said she was coming into an estate pretty soon. Yes, she did. Her grandfather. <laughs> She's crazy, all right. I've used it in a dozen books. Her husband saw me up there and chased me down. He almost got me, too. Tim, are you making this up? He was just rattling at the door. He sounds like they're all crazy around here. Let's just get out of here. Cheryl told her all about the basement. But the tea I used to... They probably didn't drink it. I don't believe she was ill at all. It was just a ruse to get in. And we fell for it. Not exactly. It's just as well they're here. They mustn't leave this house. What about their car? We'll use it. You better go downstairs and start digging in the basement. How are you going to get rid of it? Never mind. I'll attend to that. We'll pack and then we'll get away. Even before anyone connects them with this house. I don't 
don't hear anything. Warning. Stay in your room. For something? I came up for the tray. But you came in without knocking. I don't like strangers prowling around the house and meddling in things which are none of their concern. That means you have something to hide. That's none of your business. Something to tie him up with. The cords and the curtains. Here. Tie his feet with the other one. Here. Use this to keep him quiet. I'll go up and let the girl out and find out what this is all about. But her door is locked. See if he's got any keys on it. Uh -uh. Oh, never mind. You get out of here, darling. And get some help. Break it open.
that house is this? Where are the keys? We want to get out of here. Get the keys, Pam. Yeah. Hurry up. Right, now go up and let the girl out. And open the front door first so we can get out quick. All right, Mrs. North. Go on. Turn around and go on down. Don't make a sound. What did you come around here for, anyway? Just to spy on us? I told you, our car broke down. Now all we want to do is get out of here. I've got the point of this knife right between her shoulder blades. Now, let go of my sister. What kept you so long? Tied me and gagged me. But I get out all right. What are you going to do, Burton? You leave me no choice, Norris. If you two leave here alive, my life is worthless. So I'm forced to eliminate you both. You'll never get away with it. We were supposed to meet Lieutenant Wagon of Homicide over an hour ago. When we don't show up, he'll have the whole police force out looking for us. You don't frighten me at all, Nora. Anyone who tricks his way into another one's home is no better than a sneak thief. You deserve anything you get. Look who's talking about sneak thieves. You may have been able to cover up one murder, but you will never get away with three of them. Well, it's worth a try. There's over a million dollars involved in this. And nobody is going to trick me out of it at this stage of the game. <gasps> but don't, Jerry. It's either your lives or ours. For the fittest, that's my philosophy. You'll get your reward later on. I want mine here and now. You'll get it, too. In the chair, I hope. You hope. I act. That's the difference between us. My knees are wobbling me. I sit down for a minute. Sure, sit down over here. You might as well be comfortable. She's real pretty, Norris. It's too bad she's curious. I wouldn't trade places with you even now, Burton. Oh, Jerry. Stay where you are, Norris. <laughs> Where's Jerry? In the basement, this way, hurry. What is this, an election bet? There are a couple of killers. You sure caught yourself a big one this time, kid. Oh, it was well, Pam. She landed him. Huh? Come on out of this with your fins up. Come on now. Yeah. You can arrest me without a warrant. I can't, can't I? No. Go ahead and sue. Well, who's this one? The mate of the one you were sitting on? It's his sister. Oh, what a pair. There's a man buried there. It's his father-in-law. Go call the sheriff on the two-way, Casey. Come on, let's go. Look out! All right, I'll get him. Holy smokes. How do you two kids get into these things? Well, it was sort of an accident. The next time you borrow a jack, don't forget to return it. I know, I know. Don't rub it in. Mm. Well, what's the story? Well, there's a girl locked in upstairs. She'll give you all the answers. A girl? His wife. They said that she was a lunatic, but she said that they killed her father. Where is she? On the third floor. She's locked in. Here, give me those keys, Pam. Oh, Bill! Happy birthday! That was a close call, darling. We were lucky to get out of this one. That isn't the only way we were lucky. Okay, I'll bite. How else? Well, with all that rain and the storm and the flat tire, we didn't even get our feet wet. And Mrs. North is directed by Ralph Francis Murphy. A John W. Loveton production. Produced by Federal Telefilm. Starring Barbara Britton and Richard Denning, featuring Francis DeSales.
presentation.